It's lobster season, and that means it's time to go catch some bugs, free diving by hand here in Southern California. And if you've never done it before, it could be a little bit intimidating. The fact is you have to go out in the middle of the night and catch them by hand under flashlight. Even that alone gets a lot of people a little bit scared. And that's all it takes. Oh, wait. You can go get them in the day. It's a little bit harder. You just have to hit the right spots. But yeah. I want to cover all the gear you need to know to get started free diving for lobster. Hi, my name is John and I run Cast and Spear, where it's my goal to find the tips and tools to help you catch more fish. Oh, and that's what you do to get lobsters. All right, so the first piece of gear you need is what I consider the most important, and that is a good quality wetsuit, one that's thick. You're gonna be diving in the winter. It's gonna be cold, likely you're gonna be diving at night. So something that's five to seven mil, depending on how cold tolerant you are, would make sense. I have this Epsilon. This one has served me pretty well for the last year. Highly recommended. Does have some issues in terms of quality in certain seams, so you just have to be a little bit more delicate with this one. But when you have a wetsuit, you're also gonna need lube. I use this Honest conditioner. Uh, other guys use baby shampoo. I've used both, both are fine. Kind of like this because it makes my skin feel a little soft after a long day of diving, but both are good. So the next piece of gear you're gonna need is a good set of fins. You don't need anything fancy though. When you're going lobster diving, you're not really diving too deep. And that means you're going to scuff them on rocks. You're going to pretty much wreck them a little bit. These have been a couple seasons in, you can see the scratches. I go with a good solid plastic pair. This one is one of the first, this is the first set of fins I've ever bought. Uh, you can use fiberglass, you can use carbon fiber. If I'm shore diving, I kind of always use plastics. If I can, if I know that I'll likely lose my fins, I've had some close calls, especially if there's any kind of swell. So a good set of fins that are comfortable for multiple hours of diving and ones that you don't care to get beat up will serve the purpose of lobster diving. So the next piece of gear you need are some weights and a weight belt. I like something super bright because you're diving at night. Typically, you're gonna have a spotter. If you're going down in some murky water, which it tends to be sometimes, you need to be able to see your buddy. So it's helpful to have white or this neon colored weight and belt. It's just gonna be easier. I take off the stringer. A lot of guys have a stringer when you go spearfishing so you can put the fish on. So knives are super important. I use this Rife knife. I've had this one for a while. I like to keep it on the inside right here and strap it on the outside of my wetsuit so I can just reach down and grab. The next piece of gear you need is a good quality mask and snorkel. This is not my usual snorkel and mask is set up. I can't find mine, so that's a good point. Always have duplicate gear. Just make sure you have a low profile mask, something that's comfortable, one that doesn't leak, one that you've used before. And then I typically use just a standard J snorkel, but just get make sure you have something that's comfortable and one that doesn't fog up too bad. So make sure you have either defogging in there, you did the whole uh, toothbrush method and have good, good mask and snorkel setup. Another thing you need are just like the little accessories. So gloves, gloves come in handy. You're going to be grabbing these lobsters by hand. You're going to be getting your hands deep in rocks. You're going to be scraping them up. So you make sure you don't go just barehanded. Uh, there are multiple types of gloves. These have been with me for a couple seasons. They're pretty trash. They're typically either like Dyneema or Kevlar style gloves you can buy relatively cheap. You can use neoprene. They will degrade really fast because of the sharpness of the the spines on the lobster on the on the tail area. They also make some reinforced gloves nowadays that have like rubber on the top and the bottom. Those are probably the best. Get a good pair of booties as well. I use these Argos. Um, I like them a lot to be honest because they're not open cell. They have the nylon on the inside making them very durable. They also have this rubber on the bottom. So I tend to just walk with these down cliffs and whatnot, which is probably not a good idea. You should probably wear some sandals, um, but they have held up. You know, these are probably the most durable footies um, that I've used in a long time. They're very uh, slim and they don't bulk up in your foot pads. So get yourself a good pair of uh, thin socks. Next, you're gonna want a bag. This is gonna be your lobster bag. And this is why I told you, you probably don't wanna have a stringer on your weight belt because this bag is going to also go around your waist. Now there is a little bit of 
controversy around bags like these because they are bulletproof in terms of like they're so robust that when you, if you get stuck for whatever reason, because you're gonna be stuffing this with pounds of lobster in a night, plus your weight belt, so you're gonna already be negative buoyant, even more so than with your weight belt, that if you get hung up on something, you probably won't have enough time to cut through this. So a lot of guys, you know, are now using a float and hooking this to the float system so that you go dive down, grab your lobster, go back to your float, drop it in after you measure it. That's the safer play. But if you do get one and you do want to keep it, keep it around your waist, get one with a clip, a quick release clip. Don't get one with the, the pincher clips because if you can't reach it, you can't unpinch it for some reason, you want to just be able to pull, pull it out. Let me show you real quick. You're just want to, going to want to, just like your weight belt, pull it open and pull it off you and drop. So next you're going to want a good quality flashlight. Now you can either go with a white light LED or you can go with a red light. I have some friends who have kind of been sw switching more towards the red light. They think that their lobster doesn't react as much. This one is a pretty powerful white LED. And I noticed that when I'm going down, I can't really shine the flashlight directly on the lobster, especially when I'm getting close to try and grab it. You wanna kind of angle it just enough so the edge of the beam kind of gives you just the silhouette of the lobster so that you can go and grab it. Uh, make sure you get rechargeable batteries and keep them charged so that when you go, you're not trying to you know, go out into the darkness with a half full light. The last thing you're gonna want is a measuring tool. This is something that you have to have on your person if you're going to go lobster diving. Can't really borrow a buddy's. So make sure you have this on you and know how to use it, know exactly where uh, to place it to make sure that the lobster is legal. You don't want to bring in one that's kind of on the on the edge and then get in trouble by Fish and Wildlife. Do yourself a favor. If it's a little bit short, if there's any doubt, just let it go. It's not worth the ticket. The last piece of gear, if you want to document what you're doing, is to bring a GoPro. Put it on your hood here. It makes it very easy. Just know that you're going to be in low light situation. So play around, make sure that you have your GoPro set to low light mode and just know that you have to be really close to the lobster to get it on footage. And a few safety tips, make sure you dive with a buddy, make sure you know the conditions before you go and make sure you always dive safe. Tell somebody where you're going to be, stick together and just make sure you do your homework and don't put yourself in a bad situation. No fish or lobster is worth your life. I almost forgot. If you wanna do yourself a favor cause you're gonna be super, super cold is to get one of these gallon plastic jugs and fill it with super, super hot water. By the time you get to your dive spot, use half of it to get your wetsuit wet and get yourself wet. It's kind of like a warm little uh, shower. And then when you get out of the water, cause you're gonna be cold, you can use it again, cause it'll likely stay pretty warm inside your car to get you back up to warmth. Uh, and bring a towel and all that stuff. And if you have a dive bag, that is super easy to carry your stuff to the dive spot. So after you're packed up and you have all your gear in a bag, I like to keep my weight belt either on my shoulder or draped across as I walk down. It just keeps it out of the way. It's not super heavy on my back. One more thing that you need to be legal is to have your lobster card. So with that, let me know if you're gonna go lobster diving or if you've already done it. Let me know in the comments what you like to do. If I missed a piece of gear, if you recommend another method and give it a thumbs up if you found any of these tips helpful and subscribe for more so we can do this again. Until next time, dive safe. I'll see you on the next video.